If indeed, there once was, as we often postulate, an incredibly capable ancient civilization, which after their mysterious demise over the following eons has become lost upon our planet, dependent upon the time in which this occurred and the more which passes, one would expect to find less and less evidence to support their once existence. If this people created monumental structures, somehow effortlessly carved or built from the bedrocks and cliff faces of Earth, then these remnants would logically outlast any of the biodegradable objects left by this mysterious people, which would have long ago been consumed by entropy. These stones would be their final remaining mark upon our planet, cast in stone for many more years. These structures, we are convinced, exist all over the Earth, most attributed to civilizations within known history who were often simply incapable of completing these tasks. And the Castles of Eagle is no exception. According to academia, the Eagle Stone castles were built by Assyrians in 5000 BC. During its life, the castle would have been an extremely formidable fortress. It was surrounded by walls which have partially survived. Interestingly, excavations made in 1946 suggested that the castle might actually date back far before 5000 BC, with dates of 20,000 BC or more showing up on several occasions. A lot of local carved caves, which were once inhabited around the castle, nearly all date to this period. Could this dating be a more realistic proposition? Could Eagle Castle, an entire structure once masterfully hewn from a solid chunk of bedrock, actually be a pre-diluvium ruin? Like many of the other formidable and for their functioning lives virtually impenetrable fortresses, Eagle has been the cradle of many civilizations – Assyrians, Utarians, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, and even the Ottoman Empire – all exploited this once grand ancient fortress. Who built Eagle Castle? When did they build it? How did they build it? How did a civilization within our distant past manage to create such astonishing structures, either with enormous stones or out of them? They seemingly mastered the art of stone masonry at a very early time in our history. And thanks to this, their legacy lives on to this day. Tokyo's Imperial Palace home of the Japanese emperor and a place which holds many secrets, some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building, and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within, to gaze in wonder at the beauty of this ancient building and garden. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations. Including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered, a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide, only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. 
yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it, and what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Scotland is a country which holds many mysterious tales of ancient beings who were said to once dwell within the astonishingly beautiful highlands. From fairies to ancient sea monsters, many a legend is said to be found here, including the odd piece of compelling evidence to back up such claims. However, our next Scottish mystery of focus is abundant with evidence. In fact, the evidence left surrounding this mysterious ancient technology is actually the mystery itself. Over 200 years ago, archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins found to dot the rural countryside began to notice a remarkable characteristic of about 60 mysterious structures found dotting the Scottish Highlands. Made using rocks with no mortar, instead the rocks on the outer layer of these structures upon completion went through an as-yet unknown process of vitrification. The builders of these extreme ancient forts were somehow able to heat the stones to such a degree that the outer layer actually turned to glass, fixing the stones in place and making them virtually impenetrable to erosion, meaning that the true age of these miraculous structures may be far, far older than we are led to believe. Although, for the first 250 years of study, these forts were presumed to have been exclusive to Scotland, thanks to the results of the research, they have actually begun to turn up in other regions of the world, most specifically Western Europe. With such overwhelming evidence in the face of adversity, academia, it would seem, have reluctantly been resigned to agreement with the extremely controversial facts displayed within these ancient stone forts. Quote, no lime or cement has been found in any of these structures, all of them presenting the peculiarity of being more or less consolidated by the fusion of the rocks of which they are built. This fusion, which has been caused by the application of intense heat, is not equally complete in the various forts or even in the walls of the same fort. In some cases, the stones are only partially melted and calcined. In others, their adjoining edges are fused so that they are firmly cemented together. In many instances, pieces of rock are enveloped in a glassy enamel-like coating, which binds them into a uniform whole, and at times, though rarely, the entire length of the wall presents one solid mass of vitreous substance. It is not clear why or how the walls were subjected to vitrification." End quote. Although the explanation put forward after examining these facts could be seen as a desperate attempt to continue to deny the existence of a highly aware, highly capable, intercontinental ancient civilization, which once flourished here on our planet. Who built these forts? What clearly advanced yet ancient heat technology did they use to turn the outer casing stones to glass? With the pace of such discoveries being revealed to the world increasing, it is only a matter of time before we find out.